Hi, I'm Kent. Let's do a deep dive into mold making. Ever since I first started slip casting, I've also been making my own plaster molds. So to do slip casting, you need a plaster mold that you pour the liquid slip into, and you've seen me do that many times on this channel. I've also covered a little bit different approaches to making molds. I'm going to start a series of videos where I dive deeper into the plaster mold making process. I've realized that making molds is one of the things that's holding me back a little bit. I want to be able to iterate on the molds better, and the processes I've done so far I haven't really liked. So I want to see if I can work through that. In the past couple years, I've tried several different ways to make molds. One of my earliest molds was this one. This one actually isn't the earliest plaster I've made, but it's the same form. I've done a few videos on this. I 3D printed the outside and the different forms that I needed. That then created molds where I then poured silicone into it. That left a void that I then filled with plaster and created this mold. I actually really like this one, although at this point it's pretty tiny. I created it when I had my tiny kiln, and now I can make things that are much bigger. So this mold here will create pots like this. So here's a couple that I slip cast and doing different techniques. One of the easiest ways to make a plaster mold is to copy an existing form. So this one here, I have this plastic pot. I then pour plaster on that. This mold over here is basically the same. I had some excess plaster, and in order to use it, I went ahead and grabbed one of these tubs that I use for storing ingredients and mixing things up, and went ahead and put that into a container, and put that in a bucket, and filled it up. So this one is a relatively simple mold as well, just copying this form. That one creates pots like this, so it's got the same curve on the bottom as that. And you can see how much the pot shrink. I've used 3D printing in making molds, so this is a mold for some test tiles. Here are some test tiles that were made. Again, you can see the shrinkage. So the idea is that these two halves come together, pour and slip there, and then demold it. And that lets me easily test different slips and different glazes. This mold here are 3D printed. So it was these three pieces here. So here is the test tile shape. It's got some registration marks, and then the rest of it is basically a housing to contain plaster. So it's made like that, and the plaster pours in, and then you very carefully take the rigid 3D part off the rigid plaster. I have some, I have a relatively old video on this one at this point. But everyone has a 3D printer, so I played around a little bit with using Legos. So I built a structure, it's actually this one here, and cast some silicone around it as well. So that's the form there. And I again put cottle boards around it, filled it up with plaster, pulled out the silicone. I still have the Lego pieces in here, and that creates this pocket here, which again can be filled with slip and creates this tiny little pot here. So that one's fun. And I scaled up the Lego building idea with this mold here. So this one I wanted to try and bypass the silicone, so I went ahead and built a structure out of Lego directly, cast the plaster around it, Turned out it was challenging to get the Legos out, so I actually pulled them out basically one by one. But that then created this mold, which is a two-part mold. Goes together like that. And it creates this pot here. So you can actually do relatively intricate things using slip casting, which is one of the nice advantages. Also for me, it just winds up creating consistent pots. And I've tried a few different other things as well. So in addition to needing the form that I'm casting around, you also need some cottle boards. This form here, the cottle board I actually went ahead and 3D printed. This round one here and a few others, I basically just put into a bucket and the bucket acted in my cottle board. And then finally for the square ones like this, I have some, I went ahead and made some cottle boards. So this is an example of a cottle board that I made just a block of wood on the side and then a smooth face and you can put several of these together with clamps to go ahead and retain the plaster around the outside edge. Like that. So there's a wall for the plaster to go into. The challenge with these and some of my other techniques is retaining the plaster not having a plaster disaster. I do have a couple of plaster disasters on this channel. Even very early on I explored making collar boards out of things like cardboard. It can work, but it can also go wrong very easily. So there are some of my molds and some of the ways I've made them. And I think you can probably tell that mold making can get rather complicated rather quickly. Some molds are really simple. This one was literally plaster in a bucket. Others are much more complex and involve a lot of 3D modeling and design. One of the challenging things is thinking about negative space. We wind up with molds of molds of molds. We need a mold for the silicone, 
the silicone winds up being a mold for the plaster and the plaster is a mold for the slip. And then finally you get a pot at the very end. Thinking through all that, even my brain hurts after a while. So not only are you thinking about the negative space, you're thinking about the negative of the negative space, which is pretty crazy. Not everyone knows how to do 3D modeling, so I went ahead and modeled all this up, but that is a challenge for a lot of folks. And even for me, I'm not an expert. I can get what I want out of the end, but I don't have a really good process for doing it, I don't think. The other challenge is getting the plaster to release. Plaster, when it's wet, is very thick and very heavy, and you need a relatively strong structure to withhold it back. The problem is that is now a contradiction because you need to be able to pull the plaster out of whatever you cast it in. So this one's here, I actually got pretty lucky. I did it in multiple parts, but this structure is rigid and this is rigid and it's very easy for these to get stuck. I had a few that broke out because it wasn't able to release. You can probably do better draft angles and maybe smooth out some of the 3D print lines, but it's a challenge. And I've had other molds where it's been a real bear. I basically wind up destroying the 3D printed object just to get the plaster mold out. Several of these molds are just one part molds. You basically pour the, the slip in and for the pot forms. This one here is a two part mold because it's symmetric. I want to be able to pull it apart. There's no way to be able to get it out otherwise. And this big Lego mold back here is also a two part mold vertically. So to do more complicated shapes, you need to get past the one part mold that adds just another level of complexity. And then finally, one of my enemies for a while now is bubbles. So in this mold here, you can see all these little dark spots. That's actually slip, well now clay that's dried, that has made its way into bubbles into the face of the plaster. These aren't a huge issue by themselves. You can basically clean the pot up afterwards, but it's an extra step and you get worse and worse surface finish with more bubbles. They can also act as a bit of a undercut so they can get stuck and winds up being difficult to remove the pot. So getting the bubbles out of the plaster is another challenge. And part of the reason to go ahead and try and do directly inside of a 3D print is that silicone's expensive. This stuff is very expensive. And while it's very reliable and works pretty well, it can be cost prohibitive. And you can't really reuse this. You can kind of cut it up and put it into molds again with extra silicone just to fill out the bulk. But it is this expense that just goes away versus filaments, which is much cheaper, or plaster, which is really cheap. So all this is very doable. You can start simple and make effective molds. But each of these challenges kind of introduces more work and it winds up being a bit much after a while. Very early in my pottery journey, I knew I wanted to make a bunch of pots, basically practice a whole bunch so that I could go ahead and learn from my mistakes and figure out what worked and what didn't for me. I think that was successful. I think in my slip casting process, I've gone and created hundreds of pots at this point. And I think I'm getting to the point where I'm very happy with the quality of my work. I still have failures and there's still things that don't quite work out. But if I go and look at my early pots versus now, I've definitely made a significant amount of progress, which is great. The problem is I haven't really been able to do the same with my plaster mold making. It's a craft all by itself, I think, as you can tell. And to, again, to get good at it, you really need to iterate. And there's enough friction in the process right now that I don't really want to do it that often. So the question is, does it really need to be this complicated? Or can we actually simplify the process? What if there were a way to create a simple sketch of the form you wanted and then have the computer do all the hard work of turning that into a 3D model and then have it spit out something that I can 3D print and pour the plaster into, demold, and then have a brand new mold for slip casting? Hopefully in doing so, we can actually bypass a lot of these steps and have a nice simple process. The end goal is to create some software that does all the little fiddly bits and make this process much easier, much faster. And with that in place, I'll then be able to do the iteration that I've been reluctant to do so far and hopefully improve my molds and my forms in a way that I like. With any luck, this will be a tool that others can use as well. Maybe you. We'll see if we get that far. Luckily, I have the technical background to do all the software stuff, so this should be at least plausible. So we'll be able to get to this magical destination of some software that will take an idea and then just spit out 3D models we can then fill with plaster. Who knows, but why don't you follow along and see. This is the first video in a series. The next one, I'm going to go back to basics. What's the simplest mold we can make? We can then do an iteration and improve the molds. As we iterate, we can identify each of the problems along the way and come up with potential solutions on how to fix it. And then eventually, one of these iterations, we can make the leap into letting the computer do the heavy lifting instead of us. So that's the goal. Let's see if we can get there. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments or on ideas on how to make this happen, let me know. Thanks.